Convenience of tea luds. Minimal fire tending. We light a tea lud and you can almost walk away. I was a scout master. We never leave fires unattended, okay? So I can't say, oh yes, you light it and walk away. You're not supposed to leave fires unattended. But those, you're not there pushing in the wood. You're not there adjusting it. It runs and it runs and it runs until the batch is finished. It's a wonderful, they, this is a very positive comment that comes from users of these stoves. It's a bat, the batch system approach, it is batch, favors some applications, not all applications, but some of them, especially such as heating water for bathing and stuff. You light the thing, let it run. When the batch is finished, the unit basically stops functioning or there's very little action to it. You get back to it, you end it off. And so it's almost like, uh, it's like a timer that turns it off. You know, X amount of height for a particular type of fuel is going to give you approximately how much you know, how you get the water warm for bathing the baby or for uh, making three cups of, of, of coffee. Different sizes for different tasks, that's coming in. Portable versions, people, many people com comment about we want a stove which we can take in and out and move it around, but these stoves can be built in also. But they certainly can be portable. Cleanliness, less soot on the pots. Fast ignition to high heat. Tea lud stoves, if you've never seen it lit, we light them at the top, get that going. We like a little accelerant to it, but they can be lit with paper and twigs and this type of thing. But a little bit of uh, a thimbleful of uh, some wax or fat wood, and there's other things which are locally available in rural areas. To get a fast ignition, we are now creating these gases right at the very top in there. Those gases come up and they give you a flame with a punch just as if it's the last of that burn, or the middle part and the last of that particular burn. Fast ignition is a big thing. In terms of comparison with the charcoal stoves, charcoal stoves are notoriously slow for getting started. Fan that thing, get that whole thing going. We light it, we have high heat when we need it at the beginning, and then the, the pot comes up, we do the T-char trick, pick this up and leave the char down in the, in the lower basin, put on the pot back on and you got your simmer stage. That is a big plus for people who are doing charcoal burning and charcoal stoves. The uh, uh, considerable turn down abilities and Karsten was doing stuff with that just yesterday and we we're really uh, very favorable. They are air controlled stoves. It's not a perfect turn down ratio. It's not like a dial on an electric or, on, or a gas range, but they're, they're, it's, uh, they have pretty good turn down abilities. And the T-char stove puts charcoal into charcoal stoves. The fuels challenge. Hey, the topic of fuels, fuels, did I say fuels, folks? Fuels are the major stumbling block for the, the major progress for tea lud stoves. We have to solve that problem. It is very solvable. There are wood chippers, there are techniques, there are machines, there are, you can take little small twigs, it's branches and grow, and you chop them up, etc. instead of letting the tree grow to be six or eight inches in diameter and then cutting the thing down. We like small branches. There are ways of solving this thing. Call that processed fuels. Well, all stoves use processed fuels. Even a three stone fire with a log shoved in it, somebody went out with an ax, cut that baby down, dragged it home, put it into the fire. Now it's not very much processed, okay? But you start thinking about the processing that goes into the LPG stoves or the stoves which are, maybe, maybe solar doesn't have a lot of processing. I got, I got to correct my, my thing on there. But the processing associated with electric, I mean all these types of things. So we do that. Appropriate dry biomass fuels need to be available. All right. Abundant renewable dry biomass. Of course, wood is prominent in there and the stick wood, but we can do wood chips. So it can, a number of ways of doing it. Uh, pollarding and coppicing, uh, that's a, those are tree tending terms that give you smaller pieces and stuff like that. We can produce fuel, we can grow fuels. We have tree wastes which are made into pellets and these trimmings and coconut shells, et cetera. 
agro waste of stems and hulls and things. Krista mentioned some of those urban wastes that come into it. Uh, DNC is demolition and construction. And dried, and, uh, dried sewerage, uh, there's making briquettes, et cetera, like that. Environmental excess, excesses, aquatic invaders, et cetera. Lots and lots of biomass. Okay. Thoughts about fuel. You know the old po the poem? Water, water everywhere and not a, not, not a drop to drink. Water, water everywhere and how the boards do shrink. Yes. Okay. It's hard to say biomass in two syllables, but let's try. Biomass, biomass everywhere and none of it is dry. Biomass, biomass everywhere how and how the stovers cry. Okay. <laughs> Uh, we can maybe do a little bit better poetry than that. However, this is, we need to create a fuel supply chains for sized, appropriately sized, and dry biomass fuels. And what does that mean? It means jobs. And it means paid jobs. It means jobs instead of the, uh, uh, the oil industry and importing of things and LPG and uh, these other types of stuff like that. These are jobs which will not be outsourced uh, in some of these. We're looking at uh, different societies for this. So the uh, uh, we, fuels is a major issue that we want. Future of TLUD fuels. Supply and demand need to be balanced. I am not in favor of a shotgun approach of a TLUD stove here and a TLUD stove there, et cetera, because it does not stimulate the fuels preparation and supply line. We should instead have 100 stoves, 1,000 stoves going into a community where we have a concerted effort with regard to having a fuel supply which is appropriate. Then, in the three villages over, somebody sees that so, and they get a stove, they can at least say, oh, back there, they're preparing their fuels and they've got it ready. But the last thing you want to do is have a whole bunch of people with a T-LUD stove and no fuel that is appropriate. They go hand in hand. Remember those four elements, folks. You've got to have all four of them. But uh, Users will expect, should expect, can expect appropriately sized dry biomass fuels to be conveniently available. They currently expect charcoal to be available in a little can by people sitting on the street corners selling it off to them and there's a whole supply chain for it. And we're not asking for much more than the equivalent of that just bringing in some wood chips and bringing other twigs and corn, maize cobs, corn cobs, things like that. It isn't that hard, but if nobody does it, there are no fuels. I go to a place and I'm going to do a demo and they don't let me bring in the fuels on the plane or something, you know, this type of stuff like that. My first thing is go around and find it. We bought a bag of pellets for using here because I can't find dry biomass in these hills around here. It's a wet, humid area. However, there's biomass everywhere, and with a little bit of preparation, it could be made available and at very, very low prices, okay? Big business deals with wood chips. They sell wood chips from Chile to uh, Japan for the pulp and paper industries and stuff like that. This is all possible. Okay, supply chains uh, with planting harvesting, processing, distribution of these fuels, et cetera, and sales are big business. We're in the business of creating jobs, not just making stoves, okay? Uh, gasifier fuel supplies means jobs and jobs. More money will be made in fuel supply than in stove production. I'm on record for that. I would much rather be part of a, of a fuel company than the, than the uh, a truck making company or something like that. Fuels, they want them every day and it's continual all the time. I am in part involved in Chip Energy. Chip Energy does stoves and bigger things, but Chip Energy also, my partner's focus, is on biomass fuels. And I could talk about that in a whole separate type of thing. So it's, uh, and this is with regard to American sources for the fuels, and it can certainly be done overseas also. The costs of T LUD stoves. Champion stove in India here, this in India prices, it is $37, okay? Um, talk with um, uh, Kathy, who is the president of the BEF. They sell them, 
It is a different price here because of all the imports and other types of stuff that go along with it. The transportation costs will, will gobble it up. Now, the Moto stove in Uganda, Karsten, 20, uh, about $20, right? What is it? That I'm high? Oh, okay. Hey, better news yet. Okay. All right. So they're, they're bringing it down. That's this stove right here. Tinsmiths, tinsmiths and stuff. It's made. It's substantial. This is not some little tweak. And this is the price in Uganda currently not mass produced, made by artisans. Why are we talking about $50 stoves? and other types of that are expensive and all the rest of the stuff. And that will last. And the one part in that stove which is most fragile, the internal uh, chamber which has the pyrolysis go down through it, that's totally replaceable. So the outside, what's the outside lifespan of, a, of this container? Five years? I mean, if the donkey doesn't step on it or something like that, it's going to be around, all right? And, and uh, it uh, doesn't burn off any galvanizing or any paint on it. It's not going to rust out. There's only certain parts of it which are, are, which are uh, uh, more delicate. The T-char unit, I don't have one here, but in Kenya, they tell me it is $22. That includes a charcoal base to it and that top. And this is up in the Bungoma area. And so the, uh, and that is without the advantages of bulk purchases of metal and things like that. So we can bring the price down. We're going to see these prices come down.